Hello, hello and welcome back to the third episode of Soccer 60 brought to you by Little League. So this is Soccer 60. What is Soccer 60? Soccer 60 is a youth footballing podcast where we bring you coaches and those in the industry to get to know them more and to dissect more about the industry as a whole. And towards the end of the show, we are also answering some of your questions. Uh, so make sure you send it to our social media platforms, which is at Little League Soccer MY on Facebook and Instagram. In this podcast, you'll be joined by myself, Henry Shu, Andy Johnston, and for today we have a professional goalkeeper and also one of our coaches, Vishnu Rubane. Hi, Andy and Vishnu. How are you guys doing? Um, how was your weekend? It was a long weekend, by the way. If you guys noticed, means absolutely nothing to me at the moment. Um, <laughs> Weekends, weekdays, they're exactly the same, right? I had, um, I had my son's school teacher wishing us a, a happy long weekend. And I thought, yeah, all that means is that we don't get any contact from you for three days. So <laughs> <laughs> it just, just makes my week longer, that's all it does. Vishnu? Yeah, it was the same, uh, the same old, same old for me. Uh, there was no difference from the, from the last past one month, you know. Um, <laughs> it's just... Um, just I think the term long weekend just makes it even more special but I th- it was just as normal as any other day for me so I found out that uh, I think this year is one of the years where we had a lot of long weekends uh, but unfortunately with the virus happening I think every weekend is a long weekend for all of us um, anyways uh, we are going to go on to something more into speed which is Andy giving us the news for Little League Andy uh, yeah, thanks, Henry. I'm um, glad to see you haven't messed up the introduction today. Yes. Um, first, <laughs> first time for everything. First time for everything. Um, but yeah, just to bring you up to speed on what's going on with Little League, uh, we're, st- we're trying to stay as busy as possible. As I mentioned last week, we've got um, the regular online Zoom classes. They happen every Saturday and Sunday morning. So we had a great weekend of that just gone. Um, next session that's available is on Wednesday at 4 p.m. These are run every week. They're completely free of charge. So no reason why uh, why not to get on there and give it a go. This week, we've got Coach Nidal that will be re- leading the session. Um, it'll be a fantastic 30-minute introduction into it. So, so get on and, and give that a try. Following on from that, we'll have next weekend, Saturday and Sunday, the same online Zoom classes, 9 to 10 a.m., Great thing for listeners to this podcast is we have a a promo code which will give you that training session completely free of charge. So I think Henry will put up that that promo code on the on the screen. Yes, I but will. I believe it's Soccer Sixty. Is that right? Yep, that's the code Soccer Sixty. So so just type Soccer Sixty into into the the checkout um, when you go onto the shop, and you'll be able to enjoy those sessions next weekend, Saturday and Sunday, nine a.m. completely free of charge. It's two hours of of football. Uh, in your own home, all you need is a football. Um, get on there and give it a go. Uh, I think everyone should have a lot of fun doing it. Finally, we have created a little bit of fun for you guys this week. We've got a little league quiz set up. So you can log on there and see how well you know your little league program, your little league coaches, uh, and some, some, some questions there about the weekend friendly series that we run. So do log on to that. Have, it, have a good go on it. Um, Henry, what's the address for that? Uh, it's at www.littleleague.my I think the it's yep that's the one littleleague.my slash quiz that's the yeah, that's I, the thing you have to go to I knew that I was just putting you on the spot just to make sure you you knew it I think, I'm paying attention I'm paying attention <laughs> uh, finally guys I just want to say um, please do subscribe to this podcast uh, give it a rating <coughs> hopefully you like it Sorry, excuse me. If there's anything that you don't like about it, please do get in touch with us and, and let us know what you would like to see to make any improvements or what you'd like added into the show. Um, but if you follow us and give us a rating, that would be a great help. Henry, how can they get in touch with us if they do have any feedback? Well, they can always go through the, their rating platforms to just put in their, rate, their, their ratings and then just give us a comment there. We will just pick it up from, from there. Okay, that's great. That's, that's uh, all the news for Little League this week. So over to you, Henry, for the rest of the podcast. All right. So you can find more information about this on www.littleleague.my. All right. Now we are moving on to what we love doing every week, which is to explain that kit. Vishnu, you're wearing this season's FC Kuala Lumpur coaching kit. And you told me that you have a very, very long story or a funny story about it. What is it about? Well, that, that's something you're not supposed to say out anyways, Henry. But... Um, Okay, wow. Uh, okay, to be completely honest, um, I 
I stopped wearing or stopped uh, buying like my favorite club's team uh, ever since I became a professional goalkeeper or ever since I entered the professional scene. Um, I think I was just too tired of like um, when you're on when you when you're with the team, you're like you're, you're using the official attire, right? So it's either the team jersey or the team polo polo shirt or something like that. And um, I'm I was with the team all the time. Yeah, yeah. So the only time I wasn't with the team was when I was at home or on my off days. So I just decided on my off days it was just strictly casual clothing or you know shirt. So I don't really own own a, a club jersey mm -hmm. that I support. But um, to be to be fair, I'm in this jersey like six days a week. <laughs> like I, I probably just wear it on the seventh day because I miss it. But I'm in this jersey every um, every day. For the past, I think one year, and um, <laughs> this is our new kit, though. Yep. But yeah, it was everything. It was just my coaching, my coaching jersey, and I think, in all seriousness, um, FCKL will will always be a part of my heart in a way. Like no matter where I go, because um, it's the club that gave me my first coaching stint. Mm -hmm. You know, so I will always, even twenty, thirty years down the line. If I if I have an FCKL kit, I'll still be wearing it. So you can in in some way you can say this is my favorite jersey, or because maybe I have to wear it every day. But <laughs> hey, it's not a bad jersey to wear, you know. Uh, nice right. color. Yeah. I think you have just answered a question that I and many other people have had for quite some time, Vishnu, and that has to do with the number of times you change your hairstyle and your facial hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, it's because you're bored wearing the same shirt every day that you have to do something to be a little bit different. So yeah. those of you that know Vishnu at all will know that every time you see him, he has a brand new hairstyle or a new facial hair shaping. Uh, and, now we, and now, we, now we, we know why. We've cleared it up. And if you guys were actually following our Instagram stories, I'm very sure they used one of the pictures that a lot raised a lot of questions on his facial hair at that point in time when they made the picture. <laughs> Even I had, had some questions, but I'll leave it to the end of the show to do that. Uh, and we will move swiftly on to the introduction of Vishnu Nair. So give us a bit of a background of yourself and how you got yourself into football, Vishnu. Um, I think I've always been in football as, you know, as far as I can remember. Um, I'm, my mom was a football player. Um, she, was, she played for, for the national team. So was my dad. Um, so I think growing up, it was a football family. Um, mm. As far as I could remember, I think four or five, is, I, I started playing football, you know, just kicking the ball around and everything after that was just football, football, football. Um, I, I, funnily though, I, I started off as a midfield player, you know, because my, my mom was a striker and uh, my dad was a midfield player. So uh, I, 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 I didn't know anything about goalkeeping at that time, you know, being young. So I think at the age of eight that's when I, I I got attracted to to that position where um, I think it's different where a player and this is this is how I see it but a player a player can you know can kick a ball can do such things as an outfield player can do and but he can't do a go what a goalkeeper can do you know because I think goalkeeping you need specific training for that mm -hmm. and but when you're a goalkeeper on the other hand and especially if you're a modern day goalkeeper, you're required to play with your feet. So yep, yep. I, I started saying, okay, um, I think I, I can try out as a goalkeeper and I, I can still play with my feet and it would be easier for me. So I did that at the age of eight. Um, um, actually, I just didn't want to be comp you know, compared to, to either my dad or my mom in the same position. So I chose, <laughs> hey, no one's a goalkeeper, I'll be a goalkeeper. Um, I, yeah, played played ever since eight I was a goalkeeper mm. started off my youth career in Slango uh, with the under 19s with the under 21s I uh, played there for four years uh, it was uh, I think it was a childhood uh, dream or you know that's the part that I wanted to to, to choose I wanted to, to play in that part where you know Slango um, and then when I turned 22 uh, it was no more the under 21 league so I started with a team called MOF mm -hmm. which is the Ministry of Finance back then it was a huge financial team 
We played in the FAM Cup. I hope the money was good for that. Oh, it was. It was. <laughs> it was under our our previous uh, prime minister. And I <laughs> so you know, you can't be you can't be playing for the Ministry of Finance team with a bad salary. No way. It was always. It was on time. It was. You know, um, I think thankfully if in my in my career so far. I think I've never had that to experience that that um, thing where most Malaysian players experience the mm. you know the late salaries and the pay cuts and stuff. I've always uh, played for a team that was financi- strongly financially backed by someone, mm. um, and I think that's when you play your best football. So uh, yeah, so MOF, and then we I moved on to Falkra the next the next year. Falkra was a really really good team. Um, and then the year after that, which was my last year before I took a break, was um, Air Asia. It was PJ Rangers, but it was owned by Air Asia. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, uh, yeah. So apart uh, uh, apart from that, can you take us through how you decided to actually take the professional footballer's path? Apart from your parents being a big influence, what made you decide to go pro? I I think. Someone just telling me no, and and to be to be honest, it's not to say my dad and my mom um, said not to do it, but they they advised me um, there would be better options out there, because again, in our country in f- football here, you know, you play for a good team, everything's good and well. You play for a state team, everything's good and well. You know, but sometimes you go through these problems. Also, you know, if you're not as lucky and you get injured and it's a long term injury obviously no club wants to you know carry you throughout that that injury and you will be you know left to fend for yourself so it's always safer to get a uh, higher education you know go to go go to office get a 9 to 5 job um so but me growing up and seeing and mixing around with the my dad's players and stuff i i saw that Hey, this could be a profession, you know, and it's basically, it wasn't something for me to feel, oh, it's a job, I have to do it, you know, it's like, you know, the feeling you get on Sunday, like, ah, tomorrow's Monday, I have to, you know, Mm. Mm. because I just, I was doing what I love, like, I literally could just wake up without setting an alarm clock, you know, just, it's, for me, it was something normal, Uh, so I was like, hey, I do I get to do what I love and I get I get paid money for it. So um it I have no regrets going through that but um that path was I think I chose it myself. I chose it myself. I said you can call it some sort of destiny. I I I've always wanted to carry on that that tradition in the family. Mm-hmm. So it was either me or my two two older sisters so say you know I had, I had the ball was in my court, so I just, I just played it. Vish, I think um, a lot of people obviously grow up in households where their their fathers are are big into to football or any other kind of sport, whatever it may be. Um, not many of them have have played the the game professionally, but at least the fathers have been involved in in football in some aspect. But maybe quite unique for for families to have mums that have also been. Um, in that setting as well. How do you think that that has an influence or has uh, changed your upbringing? Mm-hmm. Um, it also, I mean, I realized at a very young age that hey, if a guy can do it, a woman sure can do it, you know, because I saw it with my mom, even on the football field, even on when I was training, when my dad was kicking around with me and stuff like that. My mom could do the same thing, you know, as, as my dad. And... Um, so could she could she do it better? Oh, come um, on! We want to we want to know, Vish. Certain things, yeah. Certain things, yes. <laughs> I mean, your mom was a striker, right? And your dad yes, was yes, yeah, she yeah. was. So uh, she used to be taking shots at me and stuff. So I think that's <laughs> what um, that's what yeah, that's what uh, there's no more like punishments anymore in my household. Now it's all like you know, standing goal. I'm gonna take shots at you. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, I think that I think that just changed the way I look at look um, at things in the real world, in you know equalism and all all of this where there's no there's no a guy can do it better than a girl. So from a very young age, that taught me that, and um, 
I think what drove me on was like, hey, if my mom can do it, I definitely have to do it, man. Like, you know. <laughs> so I think that drove me on as well. It's a that's a really interesting dynamic cuz like I say it's it's a very unique situation that you grew up in there. Yeah. Uh, a lot and, of and pressure though. <laughs> What was the what was the pressure like? What 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 was the what I is, mean, what like, is it? Like I was like I was saying, I'm de- I think definitely people are going to first thing they're gonna ask you is uh, what does your kid do, and then they're like, um, oh, okay, he's in football as well. And then after that is you already lived up to the okay being in the same profession. I think the second thing would be like, well, is he better though, or uh-huh. you know there'll always be that comparison like Pele and his son, or you know. Zidane and and his son stuff like that. So the pressure in that in that in that sense, mm. I, think, oh, sorry. <laughs> I think it's uh, I think it's how you just deal with it. It's just the way you 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 see it in that situation and how you deal with it. Right. Um. Sorry. Uh. That that actually gives us a very good segue, uh, to the next segment, which is Vishnu and your father. Uh, I think it's very obvious who your father is. Uh, it, the head coach of Selangor, the current head coach of Selangor, Pisa Um How do you think he has helped you in your playing career? This is your pro playing career. Um, well, I think when you reach a certain um, level where it requires professionalism and stuff like that, um, he's always had that. Mm. Um, from the From the people who don't okay i'll say it in the footballing uh, community okay for the ones that don't know obviously people are going to talk and people are going to say hey you know it's because of his father it's because of his father but the ones in the community and especially the the ex teammates and and the coaches who see you train day in and day out you know they're going to know they're going to know like oh he's not just here because of his father mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. but Obviously, when when you have that um, you have that advantage, uh, how does it help me? Is I know about the I probably would know about the trials that's going on in um, in the teams uh, mm-hmm. before anyone else. Because again, all of these things from an outer perspective, how how do you know if you if a boy wants to go and trial somewhere with the team, mm. if that team particular team doesn't have good social media? you know or good marketing no one's going to know about it the general public would not know um, but in that sense how it has helped me obviously we, I will know things from my dad and say okay if you know if you're interested in making a career move or a club move or a state move um, and you should go here and there but again on the other side where um, it comes to the teams or the coaches that, that deal with me they're all very professional and I think we're all professionals in this industry and we know only the best out of the best or only if you can provide something for the mm-hmm. club, um, you will be a part of that team. And um, I think I would like to believe all the clubs I played for, I could have, I could have you know, at least got better with the help of their coaches or actually contributed something to the team. I don't think it is, um, it is favoritism and stuff like that. Um, but obviously if you have that information the extra extra insight on things for me if you don't use it you're not a very smart man so essentially it's a network that you have is the advantage definitely Mm -hmm. in any business I think you know you have your network and if you're not going to use it then uh, not really smart and let me let me just pull this to um, something more specific for us for for the coaching um, side of things, Vish. Obviously, your father being one of the most successful coaches in the country, um, you have obviously come into FC uh, FCKL and tried to implement some of those things that you've seen in the professional setting into the youth kind of thing. What's the biggest lesson you've taken from watching your father and tried to apply to your youth coaching career? Always be humble. Um I the, the, he, I mean he's always taught me that in in not only in in football but in in life in general but um what I've taken like obviously I came to a point where again my relationship with my father in that sense where it's quite funny we we don't we don't actually talk about football like if we were sitting down together 
we would not talk about football. You, I think it's the same same um, scenario that I told you just now where my when I was a professional footballer, everything was to do about football. And on my off days, I didn't want to have anything to do with football. I just want to relax, sit down, you know, watch a movie or something. Um, I think in that sense, it was like that with him too. Because obviously, the whole day he's been... Either you deal with your players, or you deal with, you know, a lot of things when you are a professional coach. So... When you come back, you sit down, you're like, uh, but if I have a question to ask him about certain things, I will. But generally, when we sit down, we just don't, you know, we just don't talk about about football in anything specific. But what I've seen from him, um, because I came to a point where uh, I was old enough to have my own brains and not listen to, just listen to people, but actually see whether they implement it or whether they do it, rather than just talk. But I actually took a lot from him in a sense where um, we have all these coaches just calling him and you can be from different different levels of, of uh, leagues in Malaysia. It can be from the Super League or FAM Cup by young coaches. They just call him and you know they, they have a question for him and then he goes on and hours and hours and hours with them. And then after that I'm like, hello, I'm, I'm here, you know. But then he actually turns around and he looks at me and he says, you know what, I just learned something new. And then he's, yeah, he, yeah. one thing he's always telling me, you can, even if you don't like what the guy is saying, um, you can always listen and you can always take the good points from it. And you'll always, when you, when you stop learning is when you, you stop being a coach. You know? This is something I talk to, to coaches, especially young coaches, all the time about, you know, it, it doesn't matter what level somebody is at coaching. You can always learn something from them if you're being open-minded. And it might be learning from someone's mistakes. You know, you might watch a, a young coach do something um, and you see some errors that they're making and then it makes you think about something that you can implement in your game. Like coaching is so unique like that. Yep. Um, every, everybody's going to teach you something different as long as you keep an open mind. And it, you can never, ever shut off your mind to, to learning new techniques um, and new philosophies in coaching. It's just one of those things that's just going to constantly evolve. It's never going to stop evolving. So you always have to stay open minded for that. It's fascinating from that point of view. And uh, still, still speaking the same vein of uh, your father, do you feel like you have to feel in your father's boots eventually? Ooh. I think that's kind of a um, hard question because even if I wanted, I mean, that those are pretty big boots to fill, you know. Because um, mm. as a coach, I think the the highest level you can go. In your is coaching your own national team, of course. Coach your own national team. That's that's you know that's already the the throne already, and he has reached that. So obviously every coach, uh, I, but I'm speaking about myself here. Obviously the highest I want to go is to to coach my national team. I want to implement uh, my style of football the way I see football should be played, um, and implement that in Malaysian football. And if I do get the chance, um, definitely. But um, yeah, I try not to 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 look at it that way because when when you look at it as a competition, oh, I need to get more trophies than than him. I need to do this more than him, and all. I think you just you lose the l the thing, the love of the game. You just you know it just becomes it's no more natural. It's it becomes oh something I have to do. Mm -hmm. And when when you have you, when you look forward to finishing that thing and when you don't actually do it because honestly there's a lot of coaches out there <laughs> there's yeah, a yeah. lot of coaches there are people who think they are coaches you know you you play fifa manager and you already think you're a head coach you know oh, that's, oh, that's me, me. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um so yes uh but again not everybody is lucky to 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 have that pathway you know but if the opportunity comes definitely i would uh, you know i think i would uh, fill those shoes i think i can i think i will yeah. so I, th I i think i think to just wrap it up for vishnu is that i don't think there is a f uh, a shoe you you there is at the point of time i think it's better to keep you at your own pace um and uh when the time comes eventually those shoes will be big enough to be fit. 
uh, I, I think that's a very nice way to wrap everything up for Vishnu over here in terms of his relationship with his father, uh, which will push us on to the next topic, which is the topic of the episode, actually. And this week, we're going to talk about hitting the crossroads between pro football and coaching. Now, Vishnu, you are still considered at the prime age to go back to professional football after the break you have taken. How has progress been for you, in your own words? Um, I think... I'm quite fortunate um, again with uh, FCKL and stuff because it's not easy yeah, when you when you take a break from, yep. from not playing and playing your whole life and not playing. I went through a, I went for a knee operation. So like I said, I've got to, to count my, my lucky stars because I'm doing what I love again every single day of the week. Um, and and it's I think it's more hectic than me actually training professionally, okay. because okay. in a way, um, uh, professionally again you have all these different things that you do. You know you have your recovery, you have your recovery day, you have your your off days and stuff. And now this year when I'm coaching, it's I do a lot of private sessions as well. You know, so it's very hands-on type of training, and obviously I'm me being me. Eh, I have to I'm quite itchy so I have to move around a lot so you know when when I see my goalkeeper do it I'll be like I yeah, then actually now let me show you okay let's see how many times can you do it and how many times I can do it so in a way that helps me um, in a way that pushes my goalkeepers also the ones that I have private uh, training with because if they see if you see your coach doing it you're definitely gonna do it you know Vish you've gone into the the coaching world a lot earlier than most professional footballers would. Um, how do you think that that will help you for your future career, be that going back into pro football or continuing your coaching career? Oh, honestly, that, that's a very good question. Um, now, I appreciate my coaches more. Now, I, I wish that I could meet every one of my coaches throughout the years you know, and have just one day with them. And because I just being a coach yourself, you tend to appreciate your coaches more because when, back then when I was playing, it was just you thinking of yourself as a as a player, you know. You and sometimes you don't agree with why your coach comes up with this five minute, you know. You late one minute, you get fine rule, like you know, like hey. <laughs> but then, as a coach, you kind of realize all of this, and then mm-hmm. you look back and you're like. I know most people look back and they're like, okay, 10 years ago, I miss it, you know, um, because it's been 10 years since they played. But I think I'm lucky in that sense. Again, for me, everything is about, it's a matter of perspective. So for me, on it, if I, when I do go back or if I do go back playing, I think I would be a different player. I'd be a more mature player than I was back then when I wasn't coaching. I think it's helped me a lot to appreciate my coaches, uh, to, to look at things both sides, to look at things as a coach and as a player. I think that's a, I think that's a great point because there's not many players whilst they're playing that think too much about the game. They're, they're more concentrated on what they're doing, how they can um, play to the best of their ability, perhaps maybe how they can help out their team, but they don't really stop to think about what's being planned for them and why uh, and what the coach's reasons are for doing certain things. So that's, that's a great point. And it's great that you've recognized that yeah. um, so, so early in your, in your life, really. Thank you. Oh, um, oh. <laughs> well, Henry, follow up. I don't know. I'm, lo- I'm lost for words because uh, for a moment, I, I thought uh, Vishnu was breaking up. Uh, like breaking down a bit, so <laughs> I heard I heard a bit of cracking on his voice. So I don't know what's going on. I just needed to monitor the situation a little bit. But I think um, now I want to go back a little bit uh, in terms of you when you when you play right, and now you're coaching. Before this, before you actually considered coaching, did this actually pop up in your head? Did the idea of coaching pop up in your head while you were playing prof- yeah, professionally? Definitely. Um, I think not to say that I was lazy to to venture into other things but i think for me personally my uh, my view is this is something like i can get up and it's like you're getting up and having your coffee every day mm. It's, mm. it's something that comes natural to you you know okay um so 
not to say I didn't want to venture out into being a doctor or you know being a lawyer um, possibly but my always my first first goal was to go in coaching after because it just came naturally for me you know it's it's you just trying to to release your your take on football or your take on things mm. towards players so all I had to work on or I still have to work on is how do I get the message across you know and yeah can I just clarify Vish did you just state that if you hadn't joined FCKL you would have become a doctor oh I hope is that not. what you, is that what you just stated <laughs> no um <laughs> I'm saying I, I went through the path of, of you know being a professional player and then it was like a it was like a no I didn't have to think about anything else I just went straight into coaching. I'm feeling quite bad. I I potentially robbed Malaysia of another doctor. Doctor, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Vishnu, now now we 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 gonna talk a bit more about that topic we we've been mentioning earlier, which is the crossroads. Do you see a clear path on where you're taking now? Are you going to go to coaching or are you going to go continue playing again? Where are you right, right now in terms of your state of mind? Um, obviously, when you, when, you, when you do things and you coach and um, when you see yourself do certain things, there will always be a moment saying, hey, I still can do it. You know, like there's nothing keeping me from, from going back. Um, I think it's... I think this year, after everything that transpired and, you know, uh, me building up certain things, I think that made my path more clear on going back professionally because I, I also believe in having a strong foundation. It's not you just dropping everything and just going and playing and then you don't get your salary for three months. You know, I, yeah. you know, I, know I, was, I was not supposed to touch on, on topics like that, but that is the harsh reality that is the truth you know um so for me it was very important to build a foundation first okay and okay. coaching was a foundation um i had certain other opportunities come up and it was a great opportunity so i took it and and the foundations are being built now so yes if if, if um, there's a click now i i have a path where if there is an opportunity to go back and my foundations has already been laid i will go back playing professionally like i, I mean who wouldn't want to uh, play until until your body allows you to you know i think it's one of those things as well that um there's a timeline on how long you can play professional football for there's no timeline on how long you can coach for you know so it's it's one of those things that when you are young and you have the ability to do it there's something you kind of have to take advantage of um, it doesn't mean that you have to stop coaching entirely or, or give up everything else but I think it, it's kind of interesting because when Vish first came to me and was interested in, in getting started coaching it was it was pretty much a, a 10 to 12 month project for you uh, and then the intention was to return to professional football and I think uh, whether he's realized it or not, I think the coaching bug has bit him a little bit harder than he realizes. Because I think he, I think he, I think he enjoys it more than he realizes or realized that he would. I think yep. he thought it was going to be like a bit of a stopgap, learn some new skills, uh, and then get back into the into the pro setup. And I think he's, I think he's probably surprised himself with how much he's he's enjoyed it and and how much he's taken to it. And I think now it it potentially becomes a bit more of a difficult decision for him. Yeah. Um, you know, because like he's saying, he's, he's got things now that are coming to fruition with the coaching career. Um, but you've always got to remember, like I said just now, is that there's a timeline on how long you can play professional football for. So that's going to be counting down the longer he stays out of the game. Yep. So it, it does become a crossroads, but I think it's, it's a good crossroads to have um, mm -hmm. and, and one that the Vish is going to look forward to making the decision on, I'm sure. Yep. And you also started the, pro, the Premier Goalkeeping Academy. So, uh, I've read that right. Yep, Premier Goalkeeping Academy. What has made you decide to do that? Is that a little insight on, you know, Ooh, you know? Um, I think after being in the scene um, for for uh, coaching for the past one year, you know, um, seeing a lot of academies not uh, not having, not to say they don't have goalkeeper coaches, but I think many academies don't have that that segregation of a normal outfield player during training and a goalkeeper during training. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, and obviously, when you come to a professional setup from even from under 19s, under 21s, and all, you you get separated from the team for at least about 45 minutes. You know, see, training and our training is completely different. So, and I truly believe that if you don't learn something from a young age, especially something so can't I can't say it's complex. It may look complex, but when you've been doing it for so long, goalkeeping is the easiest thing ever. It's just basically you catching a ball, mm. and mm. you know you not allowing the ball to go in the net. That's it. Um, but why I said it was important was when I started this thing, this Premier Goalkeeper Academy, it's because I think um, getting the right training from the young age is really important. You can't change a player at 19 years old. Right. You can't right. go up to a player and say, "Hey, you've been catching that ball wrong. The right way is actually to do this." You know. Um, he's been doing it for so long already, so I think um, teaching the the proper techniques to to a young goalkeeper was very important to me. So um, we started this goalkeeping academy. So so many things for me to talk about here. Obviously, as we've mentioned in the last couple of episodes, I was a goalkeeper myself. So yep. this is a a topic very close to my heart. Um, and obviously, being a, a business owner of a coaching academy, it's something that I get caught in the middle of because, like Vish says, that not many academies have a goalkeeper coach. And actually, Vish is the first full-time goalkeeper coach we as Little League FCKL have ever paid. Yep. And the reason for doing that is not because I didn't think it was a valued part or I didn't want to do it. It's purely a financial thing. If you look at um, coaches that are coaching a team, they can coach 15, 20 players at a stretch. A goalkeeper coach can take maybe four or five max at any one time. So it's a pure logistical um, arrangement or financial arrangement. Um, so it's it's very lucky that we're in a position where we can um, now have a full-time goalkeeper coach. Yep. And a lot of people now are going to start to wonder, well, Coach Vishnu here is talking as a, with his FCKL jersey on, but starting up a, a goalkeeper academy. How am I okay with that? Well, this was done with my full knowledge. Um, it was never against my wishes or anything like that and it's the only way that uh, a lot of children are going to get access to personalized specialist goalkeeper training is by having a goalkeeper academy nothing exists at the moment in KL yep. um, Vish is one that he's just set up is going to be the first and it's going to provide an opportunity where clubs no longer have to feel like they need to employ a goalkeeper specialist coach instead they can send their kids to to Vishnu to get goalkeeper training right and they don't have to be under any sort of fear that their goalkeeper coach their goalkeepers are going to go out and get coached by somebody and and poached into that team because it's a goalkeeper academy Vishnu is not going to be starting a, a team to play in leagues or tournaments because he's just training goalkeepers right <laughs> so um you know for me it's this is something really fantastic. Uh, I'm going to get the opportunity to see young goalkeepers get the proper training that they get um, without it conflicting with all those other academies that are out there um, and without academies having to take that burden on of paying for a goalkeeper coach to be in there. So it's a win-win for everybody that's uh, that truly cares about youth football development, and I truly care about that. Yep. I, I think to touch on Vishnu's point about teaching the correct techniques – Nine times out of ten, when you're in a match, when, when you make a save, it's about reflexes. So you will respond with whatever your natural instinct is. If your natural instinct is to catch the ball like this, you're going to try and catch the ball like this when it's flying at you at 50 miles an hour. If your natural instinct is to catch the ball properly with your thumbs closed, when it comes to you at 50 miles an hour, you're going to make that same uh, instinctive reflex and that's what it's all about if you don't learn those skills from five six seven eight years old you won't have them when you're 16 or 17 it just won't be there and there's nothing you can do about it because it's just in hardwired into your system so it's mm. so important for these kids and aspiring goalkeepers to get the proper training when they are young and that's why uh when when vish asked me about setting up this goalkeeper academy i was like yeah go for it it's brilliant mm. you know and and it's going to provide the opportunity for so many uh, other kids to get access to his services and his expertise um, that otherwise wouldn't be able to get it. So that's that's why we're here and happy to support it and, and give him whatever support he needs to get it set up because I think it's it's just fantastic for, for youth football in general, but especially young goalkeepers. Final question before we move on to the next uh, topic is I, I, I can see a lot of um, enthusiasm in this topic actually when you started talking about the Premier Goalkeeping Academy for both you 
Andy and also Vishnu. Um, I just want you guys both to give me a little brief rundown on how you guys trained as goalkeepers back in the day. Like for Vishnu, was there any specific goalkeeper training where you stuck with one coach like what you're doing now with FCKL and, and Andy as well? So Vishnu first. Um, I had... Yeah, I had one coach. Back then, I was I was in an academy called Arsenal Soccer School. Oh. Uh-huh. So, I had one coach, yeah. But, um, again, um, having having that one coach and to know all the... the to, to get to know all the basic stuff is okay. But I still do... I still do believe in coaches in general that whether you're coaching an outfield player or a goalkeeper, you've always got to keep up with the current times. Mm. Okay? Mm. So if you, you're not training like a 2020 goalkeeper right now, and you're training like a 2010 goalkeeper, and the techniques you're training and the training methods and stuff like that, you're still not going to learn new things. You're not going to be the current in-date goalkeeper. Mm. You know? So mm. yes, I, um, I, had, I had just general training Okay. Okay. Um, but I think what helped me a lot was was just playing outfield. So that generally improved my my footwork. Um, but to say that I had the training where you know nowadays the, the my goalkeepers are having yep. where yep. you have a lot of equipments and you know you have tennis balls and you have cones, markers, and a lot of these goalkeeper specialized equipments. I didn't have that mm. uh, until I reached the pers- the the professional stage. Um, hence why I decided to start this academy where um, if you if you do something to me football is very easy if you do something over and over and over and over especially goalkeeping you're bound to do it over and over and over again because there's so so many drills that you can do but if you do it for for so many years uh, you're going to repeat the drills but it's just you doing it over and over and over and polishing your skills Mm. you know Mm. and working on it Uh, hence why where we I started this this academy because I wanted I wanted goalkeepers to to be the normal that's the normal training that they go through you know because again goal goalkeeping there's a lot of a lot of trainings that you can do but when you are with a team you don't actually go through that mm. you mm. know but if you have like a one hour s- special session with your goalkeeper coach you can work on a lot of things that can happen in a game in 90 minutes. Mm. Mm. Um, so, yeah. So, um, I th- so I think to just kind of wrap it up is that Vishnu had a little bit more general training before he reached the professional stage where he actually has a specific goalkeeper coach. What about well you, Andy? I, yeah, yeah, I, I did as well. And, you know, I was, as we mentioned in the last couple of podcasts, it was very, very um, sort of basic introduction to football for me. It was just a local team that I went down. I actually remember my first training session. I think it was like five or six years old. I went down, I did the the whole training. And then at the end, we played a match and the coach said, and when I say coach, it was somebody's dad. It was not, oh, what that coach? But, uh, the coach said, who wants to be goalkeeper? No one put their hand up. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. Went in goal, enjoyed it. And then I'll remember that I got in the car after that training session and the entire way home, my dad was just cursing me why are you goalkeeper there's only one goalkeeper in the team there's 10 outfield players you could have played any other position you're never going to get into the team as a goalkeeper blah 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 um but i guess from that first training session i i either i don't really remember but i either caught the bug of being a goalkeeper or i got pigeonholed as a goalkeeper because i went in goal the first training session who knows (laughs) um but credit to my dad from that point on um he later became the team's coach um but he actually went out and, and read books and there was no such thing as watching YouTube videos back then, but he read books on goalkeeping. He watched goalkeepers on TV and things like that and picked up some of the basic goalkeeping techniques and, and taught me those like away from training privately. Um, but it wasn't until I got into the Southampton Academy that I ever had any sort of structured, specialized goalkeeper training. When I did have that, I, was, I think it was like 12 or 13, I went for that for the first time. Um, the goalkeeper coach I had was very, very old school. There was no special equipment. It was just a goal and it was footballs. So it was just re- repetition after repetition of basic skills, basic techniques that you need. And I think that's where you see uh, when I coach goalkeepers now, I very, very rarely get more than two or three cones out because I, m- the vast majority of goalkeepers, all they need to do is, is enhance their, their basic techniques and they will get 100 times better. 
Um, I think Vish is a little bit more flamboyant than me. I mean, you, you don't you don't have a hairstyle like that and call yourself Spider Man unless you're pretty pretty flamboyant, <laughs> exactly. right? <laughs> so I think for him, he he's probably more of a modern style goalkeeper. Mo- modern goalkeepers are like that, and and they use a lot more equipment. It's more about agility, footwork. Uh, far more important to be good with the ball at your feet. Um, I never did any of that when I was a kid. There was, there was, when I was a kid, there was never any importance on how well a goalkeeper can pass the ball. No one right. cared, right? No one cared. So, um, you know, I, I hark back to that when I coach these days. I, I focus on what I'm good at, what was drilled into me over and over again. Um, get those basic techniques right, and you'll be a a uh, hundred times better goalkeeper if you just do the basic techniques right the you know the extra bits on top as far as i'm concerned is um what takes you to that next level you know but the vast majority of goalkeepers just need to improve their their basic techniques and that was what i was fortunate enough to be taught by my dad when i was young mm. all right that makes a perfect wrap up on how premier goalkeeper academy is actually gonna help the future stars in goal i like that i like that and to that topic hopefully Vishnu will find that clear road in his crossroads wishing you all the best we will now move on to the final segment which is Ask Soccer 60 where we receive your questions and just pick it up from there Um, we have questions this time around from Instagram as well so thank you so much guys in Instagram for following us and also asking your questions we also have our usual questions from the coaches so for the very first one I'm going to take it from Instagram and uh, this is for both of you guys this is from K Jenming um, what makes a great goalkeeper? Both of you. Why not go with Vishnu first? Makes a great goalkeeper. I think again, um, the the great great goalkeepers do very minimal mistakes. I I, I do believe every goalkeeper is bound to do a mistake. That's the only way you learn. But the great ones actually. Um, they don't do a mistake that that um, that involves their basic goalkeeping. You get what I mean? Back to what Andy said, like your basic is really important. Right. Right. You know, and I think the great goalkeepers re- has really good basics. You know, maybe they might come out try to do something. You know, catch the ball from a corner and you know do a flip and miss the ball. Blah blah blah. But you'll definitely not see them. You know, catch a ball and it goes through their hands because their basic is there. So I think what makes a great goalkeeper is, and you need to have luck as well. I I Mm. mean, to be honest, there are some saves that I did, and I'm sure Andy has gone through this, where you make the save, and then you get up, and you're like, in your head, you're thinking, how the hell, you know, how did that happen? (laughs) But then everybody's like clapping, and you're like, yeah, yeah, I meant to do it. But um, I think it's just, yeah, it's just the basics, basically, um, and a bit of luck here and there. Andy, what makes a great goalkeeper? For me, uh, much the same as what Vishnu says, but I would summarize it by terming it as mental strength. A goalkeeper Mm. has to have great mental strength. And there's so many reasons for that. I think that goalkeeping is unlike any other position in that you get judged for being great by uh, making the fewest mistakes possible. No other position, well, maybe defenders are a bit like that as well, but, you know, you're really great players like your, your Ronaldo's and your Messi's. They're, they're remembered for that time they dink past 10 players and slot it in the bop corner or a, a bicycle kick that they've done. That's the kind of things they get remembered for. Whereas a goalkeeper, they get remembered for being great if they never let the ball through their legs or they never drop a catch, you know, those sorts of things. Then another point to make is that every goalkeeper will make a mistake. At some point in your career, you're going to make a mistake. It's just that position. And inevitably, when a goalkeeper makes a mistake, it results in a goal. You know, mm. and, and, and that's very, very hard to recover from. And you have to be incredibly mentally strong to say, you know what? I made that mistake. Forget about it. I'm not going to make another one. Uh, a lot of young goalkeepers you see when they make that first mistake all of a sudden they lose their head they lose their concentration and they make another mistake like it and another mistake and then you get into a downward spiral and that's that's really hard to come back from so uh, for me those really great goalkeepers are those ones that number one uh limit those basic mistakes and number two when they do make a basic mistake they can forget about it very quickly and and get on with the rest of the game Mm. practice makes perfect and to add on that, that was a great point, you know, on, on mental strength. Honestly, the one of the best things a good goalkeeper can have is mental strength. Not 
not only in a professional level obviously in professional level you need you need to have mental strength but um, that's one of the ideas that this premier goalkeeper academy wants to uh, put out there where it's more of you most goalkeepers know what they're doing already but they always doubt it but when you have a goalkeeper coach who tells you hey what you're doing is actually correct you know just keep keep doing it uh, and you'll get the save the next time they feel more confident and then you get more mentoring it's basically it's more mentoring about the mental aspects of the game as a goalkeeper you know? here's here's a little question on the same sort of subject vish do you prefer to play for a bad team or a good team as a goalkeeper oh ah oh, that's a tricky one but i would always say to stand out to play for the big big teams because people get to see how good you are um you would need to start off with playing with a team yeah you're bound to let in one two goals but some some editing for you henry there yep i for no swearing fish <laughs> Oh, sorry. No, it's it's a very interesting question I find because it's not a question you would ask to any other position on the pitch. Obviously, everybody else wants to play for a good team. But the here's the conundrum: when you're a goalkeeper, if you're a good goalkeeper, you're likely to go and play for a good team. But when yeah. you play for a good team, there's less saves you have to make. There's less action. action. And when you are, this is what really tests great keepers as well: is that when you stand at one end of the pitch and for 89 minutes the ball is at the other end. And yeah. then in the last 90th minute, the opposition manages to get a counter attack, and all of a sudden you have to switch on like that. That is really tough to do. To go yeah. from being cold to red hot in one second, and if you don't do it, you can see the goal, which potentially loses the match for you. That's a really tough skill to acquire, and something that's very difficult to get that balance as you're coming up as a young goalkeeper. Like I said, if you're good, you're more likely to play for a good team. Uh, and then you're not going to practice as much. You're not going to get as many much game tests, as, as much uh, game experience. Interesting, interesting scenario to deal with. All right, we move on to the next question. Uh, this one is very technical. I think both of you guys would definitely have insight onto that. Will Kusha from Instagram also asks, uh, "What age is the right age to start training to be a goalkeeper over an outfield player?" Is he still trying to convert or what? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> When, when sounds, sound, sounds like he's thinking he's still got some time. <laughs> let me tell you, I don't know how old Will Kusha is, but let me tell you, Will, you're too old. <laughs> too old, <laughs> yeah. You yeah, will not know. be a goalkeeper. <laughs> I, I think I, I do believe in, in, in having a bit of both to a certain age. Uh, maybe, again, now nowadays goalkeeping training the, the modern day goalkeeper training um, it involves a lot or with you know your feet feet movements and and uh, ball to the feet training so i think at at 10 probably i think you should start goalkeeping as soon as possible if you can come out and you can catch a ball you should be a, you should start goalkeeping training already mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's not like like in my my time i used to play when i was with my friends i used to play outfield or when I was playing futsal or what, I would be a midfielder. But when I was playing like a legit, legit game, I'd be a goalkeeper. Because I needed to, to train my outfield skills as well. But I think nowadays in, in, in current goalkeeping training, uh, modern day goalkeeper training, you get a bit of both in training itself. So I don't. I think as soon as, as you, you can catch a ball, you should start, uh, start legit goalkeeping training. Andy? Uh, look, I think for me, um, something that a lot of people will never realize or understand unless you've done specific goalkeeper training is that training to be a goalkeeper is 10 times more physically hard than it is to be an outfield player. It's so much more difficult, right? Mm -hmm. And anybody that disagrees with that, come and have a training session with me. Um, <laughs> but so here's the thing is that if you want to be a goalkeeper, you need to start as young as possible for the very reason I mentioned earlier that you need to get those basic skills correct um, and the longer you leave that, the harder it is to pick up those basic skills and make them uh, nat natural instinct. The problem with that is that you then get pigeonholed as a goalkeeper. And if you're not careful when you're 10 years old, you might not have the skills required to transition out. So my answer to it is if you think you want to be a goalkeeper, you got to do twice as much work as everybody else and do goalkeeper training and outfield training. Ooh. And that's the, that's the only solution I have to it because if you just decide at 10, 11, 12 years old that you want to be a goalkeeper, it's going to be very difficult to learn those basic techniques. So 
if you think earlier than that that you might want to be a goalkeeper do that great go and learn how to be a goalkeeper but you also have to carry on playing outfield as well mm. only uh, solution i see okay kurt hurt asks two questions also i think uh first question is for vishnu only has go has becoming a coach made you a better goalkeeper Oh, it's quite lost for words with this one. Definitely, <laughs> I mean, I I can't, I can't say that because I don't have the, I I provide proper training to goalkeepers, but I'm not getting the proper training to okay, make okay. me a better goalkeeper. Uh, but definitely in um, in going into coaching now, I know more drills and stuff like that on what to work on. So yeah, the. It it does definitely me definitely makes me a better goalkeeper. But again, how do I get better when you know I'm not actually training? It can yeah. help you. It can help you with your uh, concentration and mental strength. I think. Like I'm sure you found yourself in a position, Vish, where you've been uh, you set up a small sided game for your kids, and someone scores, and you oh, what happened there? I missed it. You know, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you suddenly you, you switch suddenly, off you for switch a second, off something, something happens something in the happens. game, and you're like, ah, or, or someone, you know, someone stops and goes, coach, what about that? And you, oh, you switched off for a second. For so a second. so you off. can uh, sometimes get um, lulled into like a false sense of security when you're coaching, and all of a sudden be snapped back to it, and you've got to suddenly react to it. That's the only thing I could really um, run as a parallel to to getting better whilst coaching to be a better player uh, especially for the goalkeeping position like when you when you're an outfield player and coaching there's a lot of stuff you're teaching that you're also thinking about at the same time maybe not so much for a goalkeeper from a physical point of view i would say mm. uh last question for you you two um i think this is probably going to be a debate but i hope not uh your thoughts on artific artificial surface versus grass as a goalkeeper both of you guys so let's go with uh, this time Andy first um, painful <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, I tell you what the the surface these days is has uh, improved significantly from the surface that I used to play on as a kid um, in the winter in England if we had to get off the pitch if it was frozen or whatever we would go and play on the hockey pitch let me tell you being a goalkeeper on a hockey astroturf pitch is zero fun so i would always take the artificial pitches that we have today over a hockey pitch um but unfortunately in 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 the the climate now it's it's far more likely that you're going to be playing on astroturf um on more occasions uh it's difficult to keep the grass surfaces in, in good condition. It's not ideal. It's not ideal for playing football on, let alone for being a goalkeeper. Um, but you just got to deal with the, the situation, I guess. Vishnu? Um, yeah, same, same, same thing with Andy. It's not, it's, not, it's not the ice here, but let's be honest. Every field you go to that's a public field or it's a public park, which is, uh, which is um, normal grass, natural grass, the dodgiest place is the goalkeeper area. Yeah, and yeah. It's just like a plot of sand there, <laughs> full of rocks, you know. So, growing up in that, in the, the, the public fields and stuff, diving on, as long as it is like, you know, leveled, uh, turf, I think, yeah, I mean, you, there's ways to cover up and stuff. And yeah, if, you yeah. if you proper dive, I don't see a, a, a anything wrong with uh, AstroTurf. I, I think it's okay. Um, so I I've never had a problem with it. Vishnu's pain tolerance is a lot higher than Andy's to a certain extent. Uh, I'm, I'm no, 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 like no, I, no, I, no, I, no, I, no I, I, I think he nailed it there. He covers up better. Yeah, yeah I was a a t shirt and a t shirt and shorts kind of goalkeeper. Um, but um, I think in all seriousness, like uh, there are some benefits to it as well. Like like Vish touched on it a little bit there. Um, the playing surface is always even. Yep. You never get any unfriendly bounces. Uh, you know, it never hits a, a patch of dirt, which is harder than you expect, and it bounces over your head. Either of you guys know who Tim Flowers is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. Um, um, so one thing us goalkeepers like to do is is to mark um, where the middle of our goal is on the six-yard box and on the 18-yard box so that you have a point of reference when you're playing the game. He had done that uh, in the Premier League playing for Blackburn. Um, ball was rolling along the floor bent down to pick it up correct technique 
it hits one of his divot marks, bounces right over his shoulder and in the goal. Um, so things like that don't happen on AstroTurf. That's a, that's a positive. Um, and, you, you know, like I said, every bounce is going to be the same. Uh, that doesn't happen on a grass pitch. It doesn't matter how good the grass surface is, it's going to bounce a little bit different each time. So um, there are some positives to it as well. All right. And that brings us to the end of... Whoop. Wait, I've got a couple of questions we haven't, we haven't oh. answered yet for, for Vish. So first one is, uh, what challenges do you find coaching after being a goalkeeper? Is there any benefits to having been a goalkeeper and coming into coaching? Um, yes, that's why I think I can... Im I think that's why I think my, my style of football or the way I like to implement it, it, it always starts from a goalkeeper because I know how important a goalkeeper is. You can, you can start an attack, you can assist a goal, you know, um, so definitely that changed my coaching perspective as being a goalkeeper. I see the game differently. I see the game where I can start something with a goalkeeper. I see the game where uh, a goalkeeper with the right techniques, with the proper technique and the experience can play as high up as Manuel Neuer, you know. Um, you can use it to your advantage. So, yeah, it's, it changed me a lot being a goalkeeper into my coaching because I see it differently. Final question from me. Do you prefer coaching goalkeeper sessions or team sessions? <laughs> uh, that's, oh. that's quite hard. You know, I think I, I would take... No, that's not an option. You've got to pick one. <laughs> Oh no, we lost him at the end. Oh no. Uh, hold Fish. on. Fish, <laughs> Fish oh, where are you? His face is held like that as well. Why? Yeah. He, he didn't want to answer questions so badly that he just logged out of the end. <laughs> okay. Better Looks summarize. Uh, you better make a decision for him, Henry. Which one do you think he was going to say? I, I, I think he's going to go for head coaching. <laughs> I, I no, think he's, if you, you think uh, for the team coaching. Yeah, I think he's going to go coach uh, team coaching. All right, we'll uh, we'll maybe put it in the summary what he did actually choose. <laughs> well, we have to wait for him to come back on first. Nah, uh, I think we're at, we're at the end, Henry. I think you can can sum it up. Yep. So this is our very first uh, first time that our uh, first time uh, is... first time as guest as as messed up as, as opposed to you. <laughs> I'm having. Uh, no. Okay. Um, Hold on, I'm just getting like a notification from WhatsApp from Vishnu right now. <laughs> uh, okay. It's all good. I think we can we can end it, Henry. We we'll leave it on the cliffhanger of what Vishnu would have chosen. We will we will give you guys a little bit of an insight towards the end, or maybe um, we'll f we'll find a way f to 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 quote him maybe on our our Instagram profile and also on Facebook. But that basically brings us to the end of the show. Um, on behalf of uh, Andy, I would like to thank Vishnu who can't say you're welcome back. But um, don't forget to give us feedback and send us some questions. We'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, once again, don't forget to subscribe to us on your favourite podcast platforms and don't forget to rate us. Rate us five stars if you find ourselves um, enjoyable and if you don't see us as a five-star rating podcast, why not? Also, send in, your, um, send in your comments to us as well if you don't think we are up to five-star levels. We'd love to hear your feedback from there as well. Most importantly, don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms, which is at Little League Soccer MY on Facebook and Instagram. Stay tuned next week. We'll be talking to Keshka Subarao, uh, one of our coaches as well. Until next time, this has been Soccer 60. See you guys next week. Yeah.